Hello and welcome everybody back to another episode of Greedy Keeps, brought to you by the CEDH cast. Today we are going to be breaking down Brayden's Paco and Halden deck. Uh, kind of jumped the gun there, but with me as always is my co-host, Brayden. Hi! <laughs> hey. How's it going? Uh, and I am your other co-host, Ian. Uh, so for those of you that do not know, this is Paco's Modern Life, Brayden's uh, Halden and Paco deck. It is... Hmm. How would you describe this? It's a teamer deck based around... I mean, really heavily focused on the commanders uh, here. I would say it is a teamer deck where we are trying to get our commander out that draws us about three and a half cards per turn. And then at the same time... Uh, slowly control the board by exar exiling our opponent's interactive spells and casting them. So unlike many people think when you're playing Halden, the goal isn't to exile our opponent's win conditions, which is like what you think of when you think of like Jaleva or uh, Tali and like other in like casual mm -hmm. or even like former high powered EDH. Um, yeah. In this format and with this deck, what we're trying to do is we're trying to exile the interactions so we can keep protecting our Paco and keep building up. Uh, you know, just building up more and more counter spells. So eventually, when we play like our ridiculously overextending twelve mana combo, we just have like fierce guardian ships <laughs> and pact negations and boo, 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 all exiled, and it, it's super right. easy for us to do that. Additionally, we're exiling our opponent's lands. We have a couple land synergies beyond to play our opponent's lands is super super powerful. So yeah, uh, generally you just want to mulligan for tons of tons of mana. You want to play the earliest uh, pocket you possibly can, probably on turn two. And uh, then just protect it. So gotcha. So that being said, this hand looks like a ship. Yeah, I'd say so. So uh, if there are some, if you were a more conservative player, uh, maybe you would see the Chromox Mystic Sanctuary, and if mm -hmm. and be like, ah, oh, I wish the Mystic Sanctuary entered on tap so I could play the turn two or six study. Uh, it's probably not good enough here, uh, but it's uh, it's something to think about. But the Mystic Sanctuary just kind of kills that. So. Yeah, we'll deal our another hand, which is our this is our second seven, and uh, this one's pretty bad too. Uh, it does have some interaction in the form of deflecting SWAT and Legacy's Allure. It has an exploration, yeah. which is pretty powerful in our deck, but not enough lands to really mm -hmm. take advantage of it. Pre personal tutor is one of our combo pieces. Um, right. One of the combos in the deck is if you get a personal tutor effect or a mystical tutor effect. So that's like one bracket of cards, and an mm -hmm. extra turn spell or seasons passed, you win the game. Right. You need twelve mana. Okay. But you'll win the game eventually, and I can explain that. Uh, I explained that in a whole bunch of different videos we've made already about Paco. But mm -hmm. basically, you need twelve mana to win, and and two cards that have many versions of themselves in the deck. So right, this hand's probably another mulligan. Uh, so we're gonna do six. Do you have any thoughts, Ian? Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, you know, Legacy's Lure is good to get down early in the game but you're still not getting that down to turn two and then it really depends on the personal tutor itself if there was say a sorcery that you were able to leverage for a great amount of ramp that would be one thing but if i had more lands case here if i had more lands and i was on temporal mastery maybe but i'm not yeah so... all right this is our six. right right um this is an interesting six i'll say oh that's so painful uh, that's so painful yeah so if this was a blue source we could kind of pray we hit a land drop this mean was, green yeah. yeah 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 sorry i said blue yeah, yeah. If this was a green source we could play the carpet of flowers uh, uh next turn carpet of flowers into a mana vault even then that's still like technically a turn three paco because it has to take place during our uh actually right. no, no that's turn, if we play the turn one carpet yeah that actually works so all right time to go yeah. to five this deck mulligans a lot so all right this is a great hand <laughs> So let's not keep let's go yeah so um this may not seem that great but for a five it's, it's pretty good so uh that's pretty good for a five yeah <laughs> we can go turn one so so i'll just explain yeah. it real quick uh so we have to bottom two cards we might bottom that's the tough part we'll probably bottom the brainstorm and the water log grove mm -hmm. that's what my thoughts were exactly probably. yeah so what we're probably gonna do here is, I mean, and you know, maybe we're supposed to bottom a two lands, but probably not. Um, so what we'll no, go is we'll so. go turn one expiration into uh, an extra land drop. Then on turn three, we'll play the Sylvan mm -hmm. Library and play two more lands, hopefully. Right. And then on turn three, we'll hopefully be able to play additional two more lands by taking eight off the top with Sylvan Library. Mm -hmm. uh, this feels mm -hmm. like a really good five, actually. Uh, Expiration's yeah. a super powerful magic card. Sylvan Library is a super powerful magic right. card. 
the combination of the two is very helpful too. Yeah. We're not interacting very much here, but the thing is, is no. we have like a very powerful synergy here with Silver Library and Exploration. And we're mm -hmm. going to be able to get out of Paco probably on turn three. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's not bad. If this was yeah, a seven, it would be it, very um, good. Mm -hmm. This is a very good Oh, seven. yes. Because we could do the turn one... Uh, Exploration, then Brainstorm, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, with the Misty to crack it. So. Right, right. That'd be pretty good. All right, so this is our five we're keeping. Any, any comments, mm -hmm. Ian? Yeah, I just want to say there's definitely an interesting thing about this deck where, like, the, there's not many exploration decks in this format. And the reason this deck really gets away with that is not only because of the fact that you, like, play a exorbitant amount of ramp spells, but also because Paco does not say non-lands. It allows you to play lands from your mm -hmm. opponents. So that's why you're going to see cards like Exploration in this deck, because it really allows you to utilize that. Yeah, we're trying to get to 12 mana, and so cards like Exploration guarantee we're making two land drops a turn, which, you know, that means it's if we have no other Acceleration that's turn six, which is, like, not yeah. bad for this deck. So, yeah. And yeah. the interesting thing to note is that with Paco, it's a 12 mana combo, but you really only need five mana the first turn, because you just have to cast mm -hmm. the extra turn spell. Right. So, which will again get you to the next turn where maybe you can make two more land drops or hit a soul ring off of one of your sure. opponents, uh, mm -hmm. you know, libraries or a mana crypt or yeah. some other poor form of acceleration. And so, uh, it makes mm -hmm. twelve sounds like a lot more than it is. It's really five or six depending on yeah. how you're how you're assembling it. So let's go to and our... definitely when when you play enough turns decks, you definitely get used to that sort of dichotomy of like, okay, well, I don't have enough to go off right now, but why don't I just jam a value extra turn right now and then go for it anyways? Yeah, and, and usually it's not really a value extra turn because you ha you already know what you have access to in the future turns because right. you have all these cards mm -hmm. in exile. It's yeah. just more about like the rules of the game limiting you from being able to use them quite yet, and extra turn spells right. allow you to break those rules. Makes sense. So fresh seven. Uh, this is like again <laughs> super rough. Ah, uh, um, the green. Yeah, so just no green sources here. Uh, getting punished for playing basics <laughs> at all. Um, it's, yeah. it's a pretty easy mulligan, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, if this were a different deck, uh, this hand would be fine. But I think knowing what your yeah. deck is trying to do, get that yeah. out. This is a rude hand. This is so rude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're behind an Urza player, you can think about it. Apart from that, nah. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty rough, right? It's like... Oh, it's, it's garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, the only scenario I can see here, right, is, like, hypothetically, you know, you're turn two behind an Urza. Like, if you really want to be miserable the whole game, it's it's still pretty yeah. garbage. I mean, like, I, yeah, I have a hard time this. If we rip a land off the yeah. top at any point in the first two turns... Uh, oh, that gets so much better. And if you have, once again, studying, you need to... Yeah. You need to brainstorm... I'm not actually like a huge hater on this hand, but I mean, it's, it's just it's you our need second to seven. Have that carpet work. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is our second seven, so we can get a little greedy. Right. Yeah, you can get greedier. Oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, oh yeah. This is great. Oh yeah. All right. So this is our six. We probably bottomed the snow That's... covered forest. Seems right. Yeah. Depending yeah. on the pod, yeah. So uh, here's the, here's some sequencing we do. This is a great seven, by the way. Thrilled. You love to see it. Uh, so, yeah. We probably go uh, turn one Mox Diamond pitching this forest. Verdant Catacombs. Do you maybe... Yeah. What? I was going to say, do you maybe bin the other dork? Or do you just go t two dorks turn one? Oh, no. We want two dorks turn one so we can then play the twister. Uh, okay. Okay. You know? Gotcha. So yeah, yeah, yeah. this also has sense. a turn to Paco, but like, I guess it, it, it really depends. So... so you have some options. We can also bottom the twister if right. you feel like it. Uh, mm. So if we bottom the snow covered um. forest, <laughs> if we bottom the snow covered forest, we go Mox Diamond discarding the exotic exotic orchard, I guess. For yep. catacombs for Taiga, drop both elves. Uh, mm -hmm. Next turn, if we, I guess that depends. Makes us, actually, I think we do bottom the twister here. It depends on how greedy we are. Mm. Yeah, it depends. This is a fascinating I, I, if hand. this is a pod that can handle. A turn two Paco, maybe you don't do it, but if it's if it's I mean, a like, yeah. if there's like, like tapping a out. at the table, you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna jam this, like sure, turn two Paco. right, right. But like if you're seeing like a lot of blue decks and you think that some of the players are a little bit more aggressive with their force of wills, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. maybe. But it's really dependent here because like 
there's a lot of times where you can just like rip the turn two twister and like yeah. Also, like, is there an Urza player? Is there is there an Opus Thief player? Like, the Opus Thief player will probably play into this twister really well. Well, like again, the right. Eastland player is just gonna like they don't do anything to you. Um, yeah, sure. I love this hand though. This is like the, these are the hands for why we keep Paco right because like we have all these like yeah. we have all these dorks, we have all this acceleration, and we have like all these wheels that like are huge sure. payoffs, and then our opponents are our uh, commanders are also payoffs. So it's it's just yeah. this is like a fun hand. I'm happy to see. I hope yeah. I hope uh, I see more of these hands. All right. right. Oh, this is okay. So this is our first seven. <laughs> this is totally unkeepable. Not much to say. Yeah, that's what, garbage. Yeah. yeah this, <laughs> Um, this is our second seven, also feeling very similarly, no acceleration, uh, nothing really of any note here. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, we're gonna drop this one too. Kinda, sure. kinda hate it. <laughs> uh, this one's also pretty bad. This so is our six, six, right? Yeah. I, so, like, there's some acceleration here, uh, we're probably bottoming, like, the submerge, maybe? Uh, maybe yeah. Somewhere. Uh... Oh, really? I think you bought him the hell out of that time warp. That's not relevant for a very long time. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know. We, You're probably right, yeah. You're right. I'm too greedy. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think we keep this anyway, so... No, no. Let's go to five. All right. Uh, this hand is, is worse, but playable. Um, so we really? bought him two cards. Not worse, but like worse than our last <laughs> keepable hand. Uh, mm. this hand is like worse than what I would like, but it's a keepable five. Uh, so we have three yeah. lands. We probably keep. It's difficult. I here. like. We probably just want to play the turn two windfall or the turn two hall. Yes. I think we just play the turn two windfall. And I think yeah. I was just gonna say you you keep a hand that's expecting to. I think you definitely put the muddle to the bottom and probably the eyelet. Uh, and then just yeah, then you get into the to... spot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, seems good. All right. Yeah. That's I mean, fun. I guess it depends if you want to SWAT in the deck to like be confident about that. You know, it's weird. I also yeah, Muddle also is a tutor for like Reap and stuff, so it's kind of cute. But we're not going to end up yeah. ever doing that, so it doesn't matter. Right, and you're wheeling anyways, so. Yeah, I might. I think I'm actually bottoming these two because if this gets countered, if this windfall gets countered, I just need to be able to make yeah. the drops. It's like more important. Sure. That's fair. That's fair. All right, uh, we'll deal another hand. This is our first seven. Mm -hmm. uh, this hand's awful. Ooh, people will be so like, bad. "Why are you?" People will be like, "Why are you on? Why don't you want to run Ancient Tomb?" Like, this is why. I mean, I'm on Ancient Tomb because it's that good, but it's because the hands like this. Yeah, uh, this hand's not really keepable no matter what. So we're gonna nope. push that one. Nope, 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 nope. Hey, this hand seems sick. Uh, yeah. This is our second I mean, seven. Not on the play. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's uh it's it's actually not horrible on the play, to be honest. Um, it's not horrible, but I, I don't keep it. <laughs> uh, I might I actually. Think. So I think I think if we're not in the play, there's some interesting things going on here. Um So the interesting things going on is that we can actually go turn one confluence into Lana War Elves, turn two uh the Lana War Elves onto a wild growth, onto a land to play Halden. And then on turn mm. th turn three, we'll be able to attack with a Paco with a Halden in play. Yeah. So uh, that's very powerful. However, gotcha. Um, however, uh, this is like I mean, like obviously it's better than Gemstone Caverns. <laughs> yeah. Exile. Well, yeah. probably Exile is pure name. Uh, that's my thought exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Unless maybe the defining Pre spot. Super but probably not. I don't know. I like the we idea because because our... we have a turn. Do we have a turn two Paco with this hand? Yeah, so I was gonna say one, you have a turn two Paco. Two, one, two, three. So we'll have these all in play at the end of turn two. Yeah. So this is actually a turn two Paco hand, and the deflecting spot right. is kind of useful uh, for, against removal. Yeah. So yeah, we probably exile right. the game. All right, sick. That's well. That's why the deck is built this way, so we can have hands like this. Yeah, that was a that was a good good hand. <laughs> yeah, and then when people ask, um, like sometimes like people ask me, uh, should I be on Utopia Sprawl? Um, mm -hmm. I don't really like Utopia Sprawl. Like obviously there's a Taiga in this hand, but I still yeah. just, I just don't like that we can't like play our early five color lands. I don't know. Maybe it's just like me being that's wrong, fair. but. 
It's I'm like if you need if you want another one of those effects, maybe you add it. This you is probably I mean? the deck that does. Another. This is probably the deck yeah. that does. It's just we're not in green, so we can't. You know, we're not only green. I should say. Oh, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Definitely All right. in green. So fresh seven. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is pretty weak. <laughs> nothing. Nothing good here. Like you might see, it. oh, there's lands and interaction. Nah, not really. There's a mana drain, so we can get a turn three Paco probably. But then we're probably mana draining something we really don't want to mana drain. So, right. Nah. Now, if we mana drain like a four drop or higher, I believe. No, nah, I think it has to be a five drop. If we mana drain a five drop with mana drains, so like an nausea, macrom, we get to play is the Halden Paco. Yeah, we yeah. Can do both, which is like very relevant. So, like maybe if you're feeling like that's going to be something that you get to do, like maybe sure but i don't really like that as like an entire game plan no no so next one second seven uh this hand's a little rough yikes if we top deck yikes if we top deck a green source uh i mean you have a green source uh, no but we want to play the expiration so like i'm thinking like we top deck a green source we can play the expiration play the bird's paradise and then we're actually like not in that bit bad of, of a spot, but that's not where not we're going to be. Great. Yeah, no. it's not great. Even even that's that's the best case scenario. I still think it's pretty bad. Yeah, to be I, honest. I wouldn't keep this. What All is right, this? So our second seven. Six. Or is this our six? Yeah, okay. we're going we're going two six. This will be six. all right. Snap snap keep. <laughs> snap yeah, men of all these snap keeps keep. with this deck are like yeah. yeah so yeah. what you actually want to do here is you want to go. Uh, Land Finhorn Elves. The next turn, use the Finhorn Elves to play the Mana Vault. To pay for the Mana Vault, right. Then you right. Uh, you get to... Uh, turn to Paco. Turn to Paco, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, for those at home who haven't like had experience playing the deck or seeing Braden play the deck, the, the uh, turn to Paco games, one, they provide a ridiculous amount of pressure on certain opponents, because uh, it, it is a 5-5... Five, five, with haste that immediately gets bigger it's almost a, exclusively so it's a the first three, time it's three with haste that usually becomes like a six six oh sorry seven, three, seven three. Yeah, 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 yeah. it usually ends up being like around a six six or a seven seven by the end of the first right by the time damage comes right. around right. right after the first trigger time for a fresh seven uh yeah i hate to see it uh this hand's so close to playable but it's not at all so uh, if this oh, if this was a land that tapped that was this was a forest this hand's probably insane uh yeah. depending on turn position but it's not so yeah i'm mulligan <laughs> yep um too many lands it's not awful but it, we don't even have a lot of blue sources so yeah you just don't even want to see this in a starting hand so we're gonna go six yeah all right uh there's like it's a fine six it's like right? fine um, it depends on how greedy you are. Like, you have the turn two Paco, but you don't have a turn three. Sorry, you have a turn two Halden, but you don't have a turn three Paco. Oh, Paco. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I think this is a mulligan. We can get, we can do better. This is like... Oh, okay, going five. I will say, though, that, like, this is an aggressive one, and, like, there's just, like, I don't think you're going to win the game with this hand, and that's, like, why we mulligan, I, right? I, I don't know. I think, I think you keep this, to be honest. I think if you... Do you think you, you win you, the game if this is your keep? Like, how often yes. do you think you win the this? I don't think this is a I will automatically win the game every single time thing, but this is set up enough where you are not losing. I know that's not a great place to be, but, like, I you like know, win. you get the turn one birds out, have the turn two, either you can go for the Halden or you can hold up the interaction. Like, you, you are interacting a healthy amount with yeah, the table. I, I don't think we really need... That's not our position, though. Sure, that's fine. So I'm going to go to five. All right. Uh, this one's not great, but it does like do. It does have some ramp. It does have a, a Narset. We're probably gonna bottom that though. What we'll probably do here yeah. is we'll keep this. We'll go bottom, like, bottom. Yeah. Hold up the Pyroblast on yes. turn two. That's exactly what I was gonna say. So so bottoming muddle Narset, right? Yeah. So so here. Yeah, we, those are exactly. We didn't really get a payoff here. However, uh, you know sometimes that happens. Pyroblast is pretty good. Winds Rebuke is still pretty good. We still have a lot of interaction. We do have some acceleration. It's just not as good as last last time. So we didn't get really paid off for it. So yeah, wasn't worth it. I will say though that uh, we're probably not going to win with this hand, and we probably wouldn't have won with the hand before. Uh, sometimes yeah. that happens. Uh, I'm okay with that. I can accept that. That there are just some games I'm never going to win. Uh, I'm trying to mulligan to get to the hands, the hands where I know I will win or feel confident that I'll win. 
and it's time to yeah. get there. All right, uh, fresh seven. This is going to be our last one. All right, uh, I actually feel pretty good about this, actually. Um, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, if you kept this, I, there'd be no judgment here. There's, uh, You can actually play the turn to... Uh, you have some options here. You can play a turn two Halden, or you can go for the turn three Paco. So uh, yeah. you don't get both, though, notably, unless we draw more acceleration off the top, like a dork. Because then you can I, go... I do like the turn three Paco play a little more. I do, too. But... but uh, we yeah. have notably we have interactions. So if we do draw, so like an interesting thing here would be if we uh, drew some type of an acceleration like a mox diamond or some type of ritual or or just some mana positive rock here, uh, we can do the turn to Halden with a fierce guardian backup for the Paco, which is very relevant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like a dockside would, would help. So there's a lot of cards and, that yeah. Make sort of based really on a conversation we had earlier today, right? Like. Uh, if you're if you're worried about those hyper aggressive ad nauseum decks, right? So if that's something you're seeing a lot in your meta, then this is one of those hands where you can play the turn two Halden and have mm -hmm. the guardianship up, and it, you know convince them that you're tapped out and get them with the guardianship. Yeah, you know? and I will say though that like that's something that like people who play against Paco a lot or people who have talked to me about Paco will know is like if you see the turn two Halden, it's very likely there's a fierce guardianship or a deflecting swat in their hand. Right, right. But uh, that's I mean that is. You play against decks enough, you will learn niche things like that. I still don't yeah. think that's a reason not to go for that line. If, it's if also good bait. So like, it's a thing that once people know that that's like a thing about the deck, it also means that sometimes right. you just play the turn right. two all, and then they won't play into your fierce guardian. Yeah, yeah. Have. So exactly, exactly. All right, so that was the last of our uh, Mulligan. Uh, you know, our Mulliganing. Uh, do you have any any thoughts? Any uh, any anything you want to add? Yeah, so it's very interesting uh, seeing this deck because this is, by all intents and purposes, this is a Braden deck, right? Yeah, there are decks sure. in that you make uh, that you specifically have built that reward aggressive mulligans, and and you definitely saw those. Like we went down to five, and we're still able to keep some really gas hands. Um, mm -hmm. And there are people who build decks for sevens. And I think knowing your deck builder, knowing who built your deck, knowing their play style, uh, even if you are pulling a deck off the database, like nine times out of 10, the person who built your deck is in a discord with you. So like ping them, say like, hey, are you an aggressive mulligan? Or like, when, what, what hands do you mulligan? Uh, when I was learning to play food chain for the first time, I was, uh, I, once again, uh, people know I, I play in Shaper's meta. So I literally sat across the table from him and was like, one, can I borrow your food chain deck? Two, how do I play your food chain deck? <laughs> yeah. And he goes, don't keep a hand with that turn one dork. And I said, okay, great. That's now like a very good... The mulligan. That's like a yep. really decent bar for like any deck in the format. <laughs> it's like, don't keep a hand with that turn one dork. <laughs> sure, sure. But like that was like something I would not have had the instinct for, especially because I was playing a lot of green list decks at the time, right? Yeah. So find the people who made your decks. You know, a lot of them are publicly available. We are a very open community. Um, if, if you are playing a deck that is Braden's, like ping us, come to our Discord, mm -hmm. talk to us about this stuff. Like we are happy to have conversations. And we actually, uh, Braden added a Mulligan channel to our Discord. So if you ever have questions about things like this, we are happy to talk through it with people. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to say is like if you're playing Paco right now and like you're having like weird opinions on cards that like, you see cards in my deck and you're like why are those there? Um, they're probably Mulligan related. So like plunge, into dark <laughs> like plunge into darkness is this? Or I think that's what it, no, it's plunge. It's uh, what is what is the name of the card? Infernal plunge. Infernal I plunge. So you'll see infernal plunge. Like why the hell is that here? That is just to boost the number of turn two Pacos from n right. to like n plus one. Like, right. it's totally dead, except for, like, sometimes when you're comboing off and you need exactly 12 mana, sometimes, like, sure, it gets you sure. there a turn early. But for the most part, it's it's really there for the turn two Pacos, and uh, you have to evaluate it on that axis. Like, if you try to evaluate it, it's almost in comparison to most other cards in the deck, you like, that's not very good. Why is this here? Right, right. But that's why. So, and if, if you're not someone who's mulling into five very regularly, uh, I mean, you probably don't need that card in your deck. <laughs> like i will keep a hand yeah. that is like is like land it is like two lands a dork and a plunge like that's it yeah. that's a that's a four <laughs> like, right right so that's why it's there is it's just to yeah make more viable hands 
Uh, also, I think what I'm really happy that happened here is that while we were mulliganing, we showed what happens when you like too aggressively mulligan, right? Like mm -hmm. you're probably right. Yeah. I probably wasn't supposed to mulligan that six, but like that's yeah. just my that's a weakness of uh, being an aggressive mulligan. Tony aggressive mulligan is <laughs> probably too much, right? And I've yeah. said before, like you're you're probably better off if you're mulliganing aggressively too often. Sure, Agreed. I think yep. I think you win. You're winning more games when you mulligan aggressively. Mm -hmm too often than you are when you don't mulligan aggressively yep. often enough, I guess. Uh, I, I mean, it took me like five years as a Magic player to really feel comfortable being aggressive at mulliganing. And like, no, I'm not saying like throw away sevens that like only have a mana crypt. Like, like yeah. no, get out of here with that stuff, right? But like, there are hands that you're going to look at and be like, oh, okay, like I can really... Yeah, we just I, had a, I can get greedier. We just had a discussion with Cobblepot today where there was a hand that was just like absolute gas, but like if it doesn't mm -hmm. sequence properly, mm -hmm. it doesn't sequence properly. And Ian, yep. I didn't realize it was a he was on the play, but like in my opinion, like that hand was like borderline keepable, even though it like had mm -hmm. literal nuts. But yeah, once right. he was on the play, it was like, oh, that kind of shifts the numbers a little bit. Like he's right. safer against like your mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. Admosses or your early Wraths, so yeah definitely uh... and like yeah pods if you hear Braden, i talk about this stuff a lot like i'm always like we're talking about carpet like if i'm behind an urza you know you, the places you are in a pod is very important so really do pay attention to the people around you i mean that goes for the game itself too right yeah so so all right well that was our uh third i believe episode of greedy keeps yeah. um i hope you all enjoyed it and uh learned mm -hmm. something about you know my favorite good boy paco <laughs> All right. Bork, bork. All right, everybody. Bork, bork. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Have a nice time. See you later. Bye. Bye.